Welcome to the Risk Forever channel guys, the channel which shares the most relevant tips and tricks on how to win at risk, and improve your rank in no time. Subscribe to the channel and you won't even see how fast you will become so much better at risk. Push that notification bell to see new videos first. This is your host champion ever. And today we are playing 5 player progressive card game on classic risk map. Settings, Alliances off. Balance Blitz Dice Rolls in 60 seconds per turn. This time I'm playing against one expert difficulty computer player which is green, one beginner rank player who is blue, and even two grandmaster rank players who are purple and red. Wow, I even got two grandmasters into the game. So it is definitely going to be a tough battle, as always wish me best of luck guys, I will definitely need it more than ever. I'm the orange player this time, playing against some fellow players from Discord. And saying that, let the game begin. As you can see the auto setup has really favored me this time. I was destined to capture Australia in my first turn. And as you probably already know. No Australia, no win guys. If you capture Australia in your first turn, then you're always guaranteed to win that game. I'm letting you know it as a secret, don't tell it for anybody else. Okay? But keeping the jokes away, capturing a continent in your first turn, really gives an advantage for you. You will be the strongest player, and to take somebody out for you will be way easier than anybody else, since you'll have the most troops duh. But also at the same time you won't be one of the players to get eliminated first, as at the time when players will start trading in sets, nobody will have as many troops as you do so it will be just impossible for someone to take you out, or at the worst case not really worth at all. Your opponents will be in much more danger than you. Well, if someone starts to attack you and crushing lots of troops for no reason, then of course anything can happen. But that would be really dumb for someone to start crushing my troops, that player would become target number one being the weakest, and people would keep an eye on that person and be ready to take him out as soon as it's worth for his cards. Generally in progressive cards, you don't want to weaken anyone, you don't want that someone would become low on troops and be an easy target to be taken out for his cards, as remember cards is the most valuable thing when it comes to progressive card games, at first, they of course worth nothing, but with the time the value increases and you start getting a huge amount of troops by trading in a set. So you don't want that anyone would get to take someone out easily and get a bunch of cards for basically free. Also you need to remember, that by attacking someone, at the same time you're weakening yourself as well, and that makes both of you as easier targets to be taken out next. So generally you don't want to waste your troops on attacking anyone in progressive card games, you're either fully taking your opponent out, or just attacking one territory per turn just to get a card. Continents in progressive card games don't really mean that much comparing to cards, so if you cannot get any of them, then don't worry too much at all. But if you see that you can easily capture one in the beginning of the game, then of course go for it, it will increase your advantage towards other players. But if you see that you need to crush a lot of troops to get a continent then forget about it. Also do not care about the continents anymore when the middle stage of the game starts, when people begin to trade in sets, at that stage continents basically become meaningless, they won't match the value you will get from trading in the cards, the value won't be even close. By the way, I'm sorry to interrupt myself, but please feel free to vote in the poll which player do you think will be eliminated first. I'm wondering how many of you will be right. Anyways, let's get back to cards. Cards in the progressive card games should be your main aim. And the way to get them, is by eliminating your opponents out of the game. By taking opponent by opponent out of the game when it's worth for their cards, you become even stronger and stronger till you eventually win the game. You should always plan ahead and see if you can potentially take someone out either in your next turn, or eventually soon. You should especially keep an eye on the weakest players, and on those who are not spread it out well enough. These are your main targets. You should always see a possibility to take them out soon, and adjust the armies in a right way which would be suitable to take them out later on soon. Like look at the board and say which player would you say is the easiest target for all of us. 
it is definitely the purple player, he puts his troops in two different armies which are pretty close to each other, so he is not spread out at all, so everyone should keep an eye on him and see if they're suitable to take him out very, very soon. And as you can see my and red player's armies are adjusted to do so. Unfortunately my armies are not that strong enough, but I think the red player does really see an opportunity, a risky on though, but he has in plans to potentially take out the purple player for sure. So in case the purple player has a set at 3, then he should definitely trade it in to be safe. And OMG guys, OMG guys. The kamikaze computer player Green was so much desperate to clear out South America and leave it to capture for someone else, that it didn't even hesitate to crush the biggest blues army lol. Seriously guys, that bot not only was dumb enough to give away the blue player for me, but he isn't even smart enough to guard South America lol. Well, I'm not complaining though, that action of the blue player crushing blue player's troops has really favored me. As I've got to take the blue player out so easily, and I'm currently the player who has the most chances to win. I really wanted to take out the purple player out as well, but as you saw I really mess up deploying my troops, but I mean it would have been quite risky anyways, so I don't regret anything. The most important thing that the purple player had a set at 3, so the red player didn't get an opportunity to take him out. Well, I won't get an opportunity as well, since it isn't worth any more to take the purple player out for just one card. But I'm really looking forward to take the red player out, I do have a set and I'm more than ready to take him out and finish this game for good. But oh no guys, don't say that he is capturing many territories to spread out, that kinda ruins my plans for sure. Well, that was definitely smart of the red player I must admit. Well. The green computer player is helping me out quite a bit. But oh wow, I didn't expect it to fortify its army to Alaska territory. That kinda confused and tricked me. I was planning to take the red player out, but the bot drastically messed my plans up, so I wasn't sure anymore if I'll be able to take the red player out anymore. I didn't want to run out of time and drastically lose the game. So I just wanted to take some territories of red. But not too many of them, I wanted to create an illusion for the purple player that he can take the red player out, while in the reality he would just run out of time. But after ending my turn I realized that I took a little bit too many of the territories and that was a little bit of shame, but again the purple player could have ruined out of troops, he had 66 troops army while he needed to take down 45 troops of red plus go through 25 troops of green. Additionally capture one territory of mine plus leave three troops in Congo territory in Africa. And that would have been very risky for the purple player trying to take the red player out, and as you saw he didn't take that risk. Well, to be honest if I wanted that the red player would have been blocked of the purple player, then I could have finished capturing Africa and left my army in North Africa territory, so the purple player would have become totally blocked of taking out red. Anyways guys, I cannot believe that the red player didn't take the green bot out for two cards, leaving it to me for even three cards. I couldn't be more fortunate. The red player probably didn't go for green as he knew he wouldn't have been able to trade in a set in the same turn, but I mean that wouldn't been that much of the problem as he could have just simply captured as many territories as possible and be safe. After taking the green bot out, I was thinking what I should do next. I was considering taking the purple player out, but the thing was, that I would have needed to go through 22 troops of red and possibly I would have run out of troops taking the purple player out, so I didn't want to take that risk, I wouldn't have been able to trade in a set in the same turn anyways. So I just decided to completely block the purple player of capturing as many territories as possible by putting my army to North Africa. I wasn't sure if the purple player would still capture a territory to get a card or not. But in any case the move of blocking the purple player of capturing many territories has just won me the game. The purple player made a really big mistake by leaving his troops to the place where he is only connected with one opponent's territory, meaning that he was very easy to become blocked. So it is my time to shine guys. It's show time. I decided to end this game for good. Before taking the purple player out, I captured some territories of the red player firstly, because every second is important, as you know if after taking opponent out, 
you have 5 or more cards in total, then you are forced to trade in a set and the timer is being reset by 30 seconds. The purple player only had 6 territories, so if I straightly taken him out, then I wouldn't have gotten as much as additional time as I could. But since I smartly captured some of the red territories before taking the purple player out, I have had enough time to take the red player out in the same turn too. Special shout out goes to the members of the Risk Forever channel. Thank you very much for supporting me. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, then I would recommend to check out some of these as well. Which video are you going to watch next? Click on the one you like.